Welcome back to Principles of Marketing. In this video, we're still studying Chapter 1, which is about marketing principles and strategies. Lesson 4 is about marketing orientation and the marketing mix. Even in the current customer relationship era, there still exist different marketing management orientations, and these guide and provide focus to companies' marketing activities. This orientation may be influenced by many factors, such as the nature of the market, the nature of the product, the nature of competition, and the size of the business, among others. These orientations have been somewhat influenced by how marketing has evolved through the years. There are five marketing orientations. The first one is the production orientation. Just like in the production era, the focus of a company with this orientation is on production and distribution efficiencies. They think that customers are mostly interested in products that are affordable and easily available. Usually, companies that sell products with little differentiation have this orientation. Examples of such products are matches, sugar, and other basic commodities. These products do not require a lot of differentiation. The second one is product orientation. This orientation is based on the belief that customers are more interested in products that have high quality, products that provide the best performance and have innovative features. The focus for this company would then be on continuous product development that would lead to a strategic introduction of new products to the market. Examples of such products are cell phones, laptops, and game consoles. These products usually have this obsolescence feature, like after a certain time, they become obsolete and you will have to change the product. Now for the third one, which is selling orientation, for for some products that are unsought in nature, the selling orientation would apply. Examples of such products would be insurance, educational plans, and encyclopedias. For these kinds of products, it is believed that more aggressive selling and promotional activities are required in order to sell these products. This is in comparison with those products mentioned earlier with little differentiation. For insurance or encyclopedias and similar products, the sellers would have to exert more effort to bring the product to the market to introduce it to the customer and convince them to buy the product for the fourth orientation which is marketing orientation this orientation emphasizes the importance of understanding the customers their needs and their wants The company now focuses its efforts on satisfying these needs or wants in a way that customers should find uh, superior to to other products. For many companies, the objective, objective is to know the needs of its market so well that they know these needs even before the customers realize these. For example, customers years ago would have not thought that they would ever need computers or cell phones. Marketers who developed these products gained their insights from a deep understanding of what the market really needs and introduced products that would satisfy their needs or wants. The last one is societal marketing orientation. Now that there's increasing awareness of sustainability and the fragility of the Earth's environment, there is a greater call for firms to be more aware of the social and environmental impact of their business activities. The view is that the well-being of the society must now be considered of great importance and that the company is also accountable to the larger society and not just to their customers. In the societal marketing orientation, it calls for the satisfaction of consumer needs and wants in ways that do not harm the environment and provide for the well-being of the society. Now we see companies responding to the call of social responsibility. There is this Kimberly Clark, which is the maker of tissue products, which relies on trees that provide the pulp needed for their operations. Therefore, it established tree uh, tree farms that help supply their raw material 
uh, raw material needs instead of having to tear down forests. Many retail establishments have also encouraged their customers to bring their own reusable bags, which is a significant move toward re- reducing use of plastic or paper bags. Now for lesson five, we're moving on to the approaches to marketing. There are basically two major approaches. The first one, first one is traditional approach and The second one is the contemporary approach. For the traditional approach, traditional marketing actually involves the marketing of uh, the marketing mix of McCarthy. It's it includes the product, price, place, and promotion. It focuses on identifying the right customer and understanding their attitudes, behaviors, and motivations to encourage purchase. So basically, traditional marketing is about marketing mix. It is defined as a set of marketing tools, which we call four P's, that a business plans to offer to the target market and get the response it wants from them. It is about putting the right product in the right place at the right time and at the right price as well. Let's look at the components of the four peaks. You have the first one is the product, which is basically the company offering. This offering may be tangible or intangible, just like what we discussed in the previous video. It could be pure service or pure physical product. An example of an intangible product is a haircut. Now, the second one is price, which is the value of the offering. This value is represented by its monetary value. So if it is an intangible product like a haircut, then it could be priced at 50 pesos. So that is an example of price or the value of an offering. The third one, which is place, it says it's where the offering can be found. This is represented by the location where the product can be bought. If your service is giving a haircut, then an example of place is a salon in a mall offering the 50 peso haircut. The last one is promotion, which is about communicating about the other three Ps to encourage exchange. Now this is represented by advertisements or it could be communication tools that can be utilized. Now to appreciate how four Ps can be made relevant to the consumers, we have to look at four Ps at the perspective of the customers. Now, these are your four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. And from the perspective of the customers, they see these four P's as customer needs, cost, convenience, and communication to them. Now, the customer needs refers to the needs that have to be satisfied. There are different need theories that we are going to discuss in the future videos. Now, for customer cost, this refers to the value that has to be given up by the customer to be able to acquire the product that can satisfy his or her need. So if the customer wants to have a haircut, what is the value that he has to give up? That is the 50 pesos, which is the value of that service. Now for customer's convenience, it refers to the ease of acquiring or getting a product that can satisfy his or her need. If a customer would want to have a haircut, then place would matter. Would it be too far from the customer? Would the place where he can, the service can be uh, acquired? Is it near or is it far? Or is it accessible to the customer or um, hardly accessible? Now for communication to customer, which is equivalent to the promotion in four piece, it refers to the information that reaches the customer to be aware about a product that can satisfy his or her need. Now moving on with the contemporary approaches to marketing, and the first one is the remodeled marketing mix. In this remodeled marketing mix, there is this what we call the base P, and then we have the support piece. So the remodeled marketing mix distinguishes the base P from the support piece. And we say that 
the base P is the product. That's the most important component. And then the other three, which are price, the place and promotion, they support the base P. And if we talk about the price and place promotion supporting base P, we could say that for the place, it's how to make the product available. And then for the price, it's how to make the product affordable. And the, the promotion is how to get the target customers to know, to want, and to buy the product. Now, the second contemporary approach would be from four P's to seven P's. As you already know, the four P's include product, price, promotion, and place. Now, it was redefined and three P's were added, which are process, people, and physical environment. In detail, the first P, which is product, it is the key to developing a product is to make sure that there is a sufficient, sufficiently large target audience. For price, a product or service is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. For the place, your business needs to be where your customers expect it to be. For promotion, good promotion is about communicating the benefits of your products or services and not simply focusing on the features. Now for the fifth P, which is people, a marketer think of everyone the business comes into contact with as a potential customer. If the marketer considers the process, which is P6, the process is the complete buying experience. From the first point of contact, which is usually a website nowadays, through to delivery of the product or service, the, it has to be considered. For P7, which is the physical evidence, it is about customer experience. So when a customer first engages with a company for the first time, they're not familiar with the products or services. So a marketer needs to provide customers with physical evidence that inspires confidence. For a specific example, say that the product in this case is a service or live-in care. Your price, you can consider it to be the cheapest in the market or it could be just reasonable enough, not the cheapest and not the most expensive. For place, a marketer might consider visiting the client's home and that will make a difference. For promotion, a marketer may identify the correct target audience and that would be the key. The marketer can target um, in the promotion those people who are working and they might need this live-in care service. For people, having great carers was the key to great testimonials. So if you have a uh, reliable staff, people who really cares about the clients, then that would be good for the company. For process, uh, the company may consider using a software system that would fit the service that they're uh, providing. And for physical evidence, good client brochures can provide the initial confidence that will boost up the belief in the company. Now let's move on to the new business models. The first one is the social marketing approach. Cited in several marketing books, this approach was conceptualized by Kotler and Zaltman in 1970. This Business model considers the societal marketing orientation that is similar to the basic marketing orientation, except that more emphasis is given on existing social norms and abstaining from any activities that may be detrimental to society at large. The next one is relationship marketing approach. This business model considers the practice of building long-term satisfying relations with key parties, which are the customers, suppliers, and distributors. And that is on the purpose of retaining their long-term preference and business. 